and I already knew that I was like on the asexual spectrum and I was like that's a, that's a thing people like you see a person and you're like yeah I want to do that and I'm like what boggled my mind literally my mind was blown that day and I will never not be mind blown about it Hello my lovely peeps and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, how are you? If you are coming back, thank you so much for coming back. I just want to let you know that all of my socials are in the description, my Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Redbubble, and Patreon if you'd like to support this channel. Also, I just want to remind you to smash that like button, turn on notifications if you'd like to see more LGBTQ plus content from the space right here. So let's get into the video. So today I'm going to be reacting to Jaden Animation's coming out video. I've had a couple people mention it in my comments and I also had a friend of mine send it to me yesterday saying that I should react to this because she's coming out as a row ace and uh, that's kind of what I do on this channel. I talk a lot about asexual stuff and aromantic stuff. First off I'd like to say congratulations to Jaden for coming out and also hi welcome to the ace and a row community on YouTube. I love seeing more a row ace rep and more content creators coming out as a row or ace. That being said let's get into Jaden Animation's coming out video. Okay, before I even say anything, let's lay out some ground rules. This is probably gonna be the most I'm open so I'll ever get about my personal life. I know I've shared tidbits of myself and life through little stories, but when it comes to personal Honestly, stuff, I'm very private. Whatever you Especially don't within the past few Especially years. To I'm gonna be talking in very general surface level terms because specific personal details exactly. are for me to know and in the nicest way possible, <laughs> none of your business. Basically, this is something I wanna talk about, share, and bring a spotlight to. But at the same time, you get the Cliff Notes version. So no trying to assume or guess anything beyond what I'm sharing within this video. At the end of the day, we're all just strangers refusing yeah, to listen to the Stranger that's Danger pretty much all, that YouTube all right, is. formalities aside, no let's danger. get into it. I've come to realize that I'm Arrow Ace, which stands it. for Aromantic Asexual. And I know what you're thinking. That's not <laughs> gay. What the hell is that? And you know what? That is completely fair because uh, I, I didn't know it. what that was either. Aromantic and asexual are two different things and I'm going to break them down to you separately, starting mm -hmm, with mm -hmm, aromantic mm -hmm. because no one really knows what that one is. And also it's my personal favorite. Someone who's aromantic yeah, no is defined as a knows. person who feels very little to no romantic attraction to anyone at all. So like they might not develop crushes on people or feel the need to be in a romantic relationship with anyone. Very general terms, but hopefully you yep. kind of get the gist. If not, here's a little story example from me. Growing up, I never developed crushes on- I like that she's breaking down what Aero is and I'm assuming that she's gonna be doing the same thing for asexual as well. I do like the fact that she's kind of like don't pry into my life if i'm telling you this this is probably the only time i'm gonna tell you and that's all you need not everyone has the need to explain their sexuality and it, that's completely okay because it, it can be a really private thing it doesn't have to be as open as people try to pry into it can be really invasive sometimes being aromantic and asexual because people will try to be like but how does this work how does that work and it's like does it matter if we're not doing anything it shouldn't really matter to you on anyone I remember when I was in fifth grade, kids were talking about their crushes left and right, and it was starting to feel like something I had to experience too, just because I, I thought that's just what happens. Don't make fun of nine-year-old me, I was a sheep. Anyway, I decided I needed yeah. to have a crush because that's just what happens to people, and I very robotically chose this <laughs> random kid in the class who- Oh my gosh. This is such an Aro ace thing. I am on the asexual spectrum, but I'm not aromantic. But I do have that similar experience of other people are having crushes. Let's try to fit in and try to do what they're doing. I actually picked out someone to have a crush on once. It was embarrassing. We can call Pikachu. That's not his name. He didn't mean yeah, anything exactly. to me and I didn't do anything about this crush Like I didn't tell anyone or anything It was just a headcanon <laughs> thing for me to feel up to speed and like I was hitting my normal human emotions quota But it's funny because on Valentine's Day, you know how in elementary school Everyone would bring cheesy Walmart Valentine's cards for everyone in the class And then you'd have a box full of candy and hollow emotions I from wish. everyone we only got like little Well, chocolates. my school did that. When I went through my Never box, had, like, I pulled out box. Pikachu's Valentine and thought to myself, someone who has a crush on someone would keep this. <laughs> I love how she's like I analyzing. Think. So she's I put like, Pikachu's copy paste hmm, Batman Valentine in my drawer and <laughs> promptly forgot about it because it meant nothing to me. But hey, that's just what I thought I was supposed to do. Man. 
I'm so good at this. <laughs> then like a year or so later, when my mom was going through my room, she pulled out the card and was like, why do you have this? And I was like, honestly, I have no idea. Years passed, I entered junior high and thought to myself, all right, this is the time where people start developing crushes <laughs> and then do something about it. Like get into relationships or something. I always thought so that was, was like, so ridiculous. So I was like preparing to be interested in people. On the first day of school, I scoped out the room to see if there was anyone that I thought looked like someone I could- Yeah, no, honestly, I never understood. So I grew up in a religion that was like, oh, don't date until you were 16. Which made me think that on my 16th birthday, I would just automatically- <laughs> boyfriend <laughs> not how it worked but what did end up happening was me being like oh all my friends are getting into relationships or like wanting to be in relationships and stuff and i was over here like i'm good i never had that urge to go get a relationship i was like is everyone else okay i never i never got it i never understood it could develop a crush on and this was when classes started being divided up into periods so there were like six batches of people i sifted through but no one caught my eye and i thought of how Man. she's like tindering <laughs> unlucky went through the whole like school year next year old around classes changed i did the same potentials crush scoping again and the same thing happened i wasn't drawn to anyone at all I love Man. the heart, by the way. It's so Unlucky again. Cute. Every year I thought something would change, especially going into high school when people started actually hitting puberty and were getting conventionally attractive. But my entire <laughs> school life grades kindergarten to senior year, which I'm pretty sure is like 13 years. That's ridiculous. I wasn't that's interested insane. in a single so person throughout is. any of it. And what's funny was I was thinking, man, what's the deal? Why is no one attractive? Yep. And I went yep. to a big high school. There were like three and a half thousand students there. Oh, Surely I am not the outlier in this formula. <laughs> why are none of you attractive? <laughs> By the time I was- Oh my God. Oh, I understand why she's got such a big platform. She's hilarious. But honestly, I feel like a lot of people on the Aero spectrum and asexual spectrum can relate to that experience of being like, why are none of you attractive? I don't understand. It really did. It was like, why are none of you doing it for me? And it turns out because just not having that attraction, just not having that attraction at all. Going to college, I really felt like I had to find someone. It felt like I was falling behind the curve or if I was going to find someone, it was going to have to happen now. I yeah. made a lot of new friends. Yeah, I really don't like that whole expectation of, oh, if you don't find someone in college, you're never going to find someone. You're not going to meet all of the people that you know in college. When people are like, oh, your 20s are the prime to meet the person you're going to be with and fall in love. It's like, you're so young. You don't know all of the people that you're going to meet ever. It just confuses me. I don't like all the societal pressures around relationships. Friends, and that's when I thought I developed my first genuine crush. Long story short, in hindsight, no, it wasn't a crush and I was just wrong. I just met someone who I thought was cool and funny and had a really strong desire to be close to them. But that looking back, knowing what I do now, attraction. it wasn't in a romantic way. I realized I can get very excited and tunnel vision on people I think I are really cool or interesting thing. and kind of obsess over getting to know them or just want to spend a lot of time with them. But whenever I got I into those that. tunnel vision moments, if I sat down and asked myself if I actually wanted to be in a relationship with them and hold hands or cuddle or kiss the answer was not really but if they wanted to i could go along with it <laughs> Probably which I not do not think answer. is right. <laughs> in my very old flirting video, which I refuse to rewatch, I think at one point in it, I said something along the lines of, if you're interested in someone, but they just want to be friends, I don't understand why some people can't deal with that. Okay. And that was primarily because I didn't realize there was an emotional difference between a crush or falling in love and just being really good friends with someone. So oops, sorry for the bad take, I think. I really just thought having a crush on someone was wanting to be their number one best friend. <laughs> Look, I said don't make fun of me. The thing is, I don't think that's a bad take. Like, if one person isn't having those feelings, you shouldn't blame them for not having those feelings. A lot of stereotypes around, or not stereotypes, but a lot of things that, especially aromantics and asexuals, get blamed for the fact that they don't have the attraction, and people are like, well, what's wrong with you? And it's like, well, I'm sorry that I'm, I don't have those feelings. Feeling. A lot of people make aromantics and asexuals feel bad for not having those feelings. So I don't think this is a bad take actually. 
if one person isn't having those feelings, the other person really should just be like, okay, like, move on. I, I get it, I understand, but if someone is literally telling you, hey, I'm asexual or I'm aromantic, certain things aren't going to be happening for me if you still want to pursue something because you can be in a relationship or some sort of partnership while being a row or east. I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, I don't think it's really a bad take. But yes, there are differences between just being really close friends with someone and having a crush on them. Me. To me, it used to feel like if I was wanting to become friends with someone to that high of a degree, that would be the next step or justify Aww. why I wanted to put this much time, effort, and energy into one person. And it didn't feel right or even fair going through all of this with someone and then tell them they're just a friend. I don't know. It just didn't feel like it made sense, even though I really didn't technically see them in a romantic way. I just didn't understand what was going on really or that there was supposed to be real emotions instead of a logical understanding of, of steps. And the fact that I was under the assumption that I was supposed to be interested in people in a romantic <laughs> way didn't help with anything. I always preferred I like to that. say good friends but never felt like I could have that and I worried that if I said <laughs> no that we would just start drifting apart which I obviously didn't want either. It's been a very long journey discovering this about myself. Everything I'm saying has all been extremely subconscious and not understood or defined for many years. I even used to think I was bi or pan for the longest time because I would think to myself, well bi is being interested in both genders. I don't really care for either, but zero is equal to zero, so I guess I'm bi or pan. I got math involved. <laughs> If I knew what aromanticism was when I was growing up, things would have been a lot less complicated for me a <laughs> like lot the logic sooner. There. I think it's Love mainly because people don't really talk about it or even know what it is or that it's real. Romance and love is the number one most this talked about topic why, on the oh planet. My God, this is literally why you have to teach kids about the LGBTQ plus community. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go explicit. There are ways to water down attractions and stuff so that it is kid friendly. So when people are like, oh, this is sexual, it's weird. Don't tell kids. I'm like, first of all, y'all sexualize kids anyway, which is not okay. Y'all tell kids about sexuality and heterosexuality from the get go. So don't even play with me on that. They literally need to learn about these more marginalized parts of the LGBTQ plus community like aromanticism and asexuality and all the other stuff past the LGBT. So many people have these experiences and don't know until later in life because they didn't know as a kid. It, I was 14 when I first heard the word asexual, around 15 or 16 when I heard the word demisexual and was like, oh, that's what I am. So I'm really lucky that I was able to find that when I was a teenager, but a lot of people, and especially people in my comments, that are on my asexual videos are like, hey, I'm like in my 20s and my 30s and my, I had someone in their like 50s or 60s be like, hey, I'm just discovering that I might be asexual. That's why we got to put this out there and have more representation. And I'm so happy that she's talking about this because she's got a substantial platform and bringing awareness to this can help millions of people. <laughs> Thank you for making this video is essentially what I'm saying. I'm probably going to say that again at some point in the video, but thank you for making this coming out video. Everything I've been taught or learned through society is that love and romance is everywhere, everyone feels it, and it's gonna happen to you. Just a funny little note, there was a point where I was listening to some generic romance song on the radio, you know, like all of them, yep. and I just suddenly thought to myself, wait, wait. do people actually <laughs> feel these things towards each other? Like all these mushy lyrics Honestly. are real emotions? They're, They're not, not joking. joking. And that's when I started feeling like something was different. <laughs> I approached romance under the blanket term thought of, sure, why not? And didn't recognize it was actually a, a feeling, which might sound stupid, but look, I don't know. No one presented me with any <laughs> other options. I did a lot of rationalizing. If someone ever expressed romantic interest in me, I would mentally make a kind of logical list of their pros and cons and the pros and cons of what a relationship would look like with them based on what I knew about them as a person. I didn't realize there was supposed <laughs> to be an extra, like, excited feeling or the fact that you're not supposed to think about it as if it were a business exchange. I understand compatibility is a huge important variable when it comes to sharing a relationship with someone, it's... but at the end of the day it's still, apparently, still a very emotionally driven thing. And I literally had to make that discovery and teach it to myself. Now <laughs> I'm gonna talk about being asexual very briefly, and I'm gonna preface it with Let's all just be mature about this, all right? We're all pretending to be adults here. I've got my eye on some of you. <laughs> Behave. 
Okay, this is definitely treading into uncomfortable personal boundary territory for me, but yeah, I do want to share that I'm asexual too, which is defined as someone who feels little to no intimate attraction to anyone. Yay. Look, I know we said we're all adults, but I'm still gonna dance around the vocabulary, all right? <laughs> yes, there's a difference between romantic and intimate attraction. Little side note, I will say you Honestly, can experience yeah. romantic attraction to someone, but no intimate attraction. Or you can experience intimate attraction, but no romantic attraction. You can be mm -hmm. one and not the <laughs> other. It's not necessarily a package deal. Most people feel both. They're and I do not feel either. Anyway, I have never been magnetically attracted yeah. to the look or shape of a single person in my entire life. <laughs> and did not realize- I like that she made that distinction because a lot of people are like, oh, a ro ace go together. No, you can be a romantic and not asexual, or you can be asexual and not a romantic. Very happy she said that. It was a real thing until very recently. I'm able to identify when someone looks conventionally attractive, like by textbook definition, yeah. but I never realized people <laughs> are genuinely drawn to people they think are attractive. I didn't know that people could just see someone and be like, wow, they're gorgeous. I would love to get to know that person mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. go on a date with them or whatever else you people do. D yep. I didn't think it was real. I thought people yep. were exaggerating or something. I don't know. And I also couldn't believe that some Literally. people feel that with multiple people or like this. Literally this. Do you know how long it took me to realize that people actually are sexually attracted to random ass people that walk down the street? It literally took me until I was 21 talking to a friend of mine and she was talking about her attraction and I was like, what? Like who, like question marks everywhere. And I already knew that I was like on the asexual spectrum and I was like, that's a, that's a thing people like you see a person and you're like, yeah, I want to do that. And I'm like, <laughs> what boggled my mind? Literally, my mind was blown that day. And I will never not be mind blown about it because it just didn't, I didn't know, didn't know. Celebrities, which sounds absolutely I exhausting. It, it ties back to when I was in school, like looking around for people to like. It makes sense now that no one caught my eye because that doesn't happen to me. I was just wasting my time for 13 years. I feel like such a fool. Now, there's an easy assumption to make about asexual people and that they all have zero interest in being intimate with anyone at all, which actually isn't true. Yeah, some true. of them are genuinely turned off by it and some aren't. Some reasons would be that they just don't mind it or they want to make their partner happy mm -hmm. or enjoy the emotional closeness of it. There's a million different reasons and a million different people. Am I sharing what kind of a people I am? Nope. <laughs> and you don't know me personally enough in the slightest to be able to try and parasocially analyze where I stand on that spectrum. I'm just here to say I am this. We are moving on. <laughs> when I stumbled onto the term arrow ace and started realizing I fall into that category, it helped me feel much more confident and sure of myself. I've read That's a lot about how people so say they felt good. broken or that something was wrong with them. But honestly, I was the complete opposite. <laughs> Coming from my very biased perspective, I think Arrow Ace is one of, if not the coolest and most confident orientation. Yes, literally, I, I, I said this, I think in the last video of A Romantics, I'm like, being a Ace is like the coolest freaking thing in the world because you just don't have to deal. It's out there. Not needing a single gram of, of romantic or intimate validation from anyone yeah, is right? so it's cool. Literally All you need you. is yourself to be happy. Maybe friends and family too. And birds. The more I came <laughs> to terms with the fact I'm Arrow Ace, the more empowered and capable I felt. But at the same time, I was also starting to feel more alone and isolated. As cool and amazing and unique and awesome as I think it is, it can be really hard for other people to relate to or even understand. Everyone okay. else and their orientations okay. are able to bond and relate to the love and romance aspects. And we're over here like, we don't do that. I don't even know if I'm explaining it very well. It yeah, honestly, the lack of asexual and aromantic positivity in the LGBTQ plus community is really bad. <laughs> like really bad and i definitely think that bringing more awareness to it and talking more about it is really important and i feel like a lot of people have the mentality that because you don't feel romantic attraction or sexual attraction doesn't mean that you're not part of the community but you are part of the community if you want to be there are some asexuals and aromantics that don't identify with the community and that's completely fine and valid you are part of the lgbtq plus community because you're not fitting in 
into the heteronormativity that is so prevalent in our society because you are outside of it because you are not feeling that attraction. <laughs> the community is not not the best to asexuals or aromantics, which hopefully through representation and talking more about it and educating people, we can change, which is why I love making these videos and why I'm so happy with this video. Ugh! I love this video. Kind of does go against everything everyone's ever been taught about anything. Romance is taught to be a basic assumed emotion, yep. which I do think is a bit misleading. A common argument used against the Aeroace orientation is that romance and intimacy is what makes someone human. But I mean, I don't know, lots of birds mate for life, which is a better ratio than people. <laughs> and all animals get frisky. You know, that's just how they became not extinct. It's not an exclusive to humans thing. If I were to guess, I would assume the thing that makes someone human is basic empathy. Yeah. Like, I'm not an emotionalist monster. I can still love people. I love my family and my pets, just platonically. And I would hope that you're the same. I just don't experience romantic love, which I don't know. I don't think that's yeah. harming anyone. Definitely not me. I'm having the time of my life. Mm. I don't think you need to be in a relationship 100%. to be happy. And if you don't want to be just on your own, I think there's many types of people in relationships mm -hmm. that push the boundaries of what a conventional relationship yeah. looks like. Telling someone that they need to be in a romantic relationship to be happy and fulfilled weird. is yeah. weird. And then when that person says they're not happy, they're told relationships take a lot of work and that's just how it goes. And that's also weird. I don't know. Yeah, I also think too. it's weird that once someone reaches a certain age, people inherently start thinking it's sad they're not in a romantic relationship or assume they're lonely and sad. No one thinks a child is sad yeah, and lonely weird. just we because start they're not in a long-term relationship. Like, oh, you're not in a relationship? I, well. I don't know. I, I don't get it. And, and I also think I'm rambling. At the end of the day, it's all very complicated to talk about these things, especially because I don't know the feelings I'm supposed to be feeling, yeah. let alone talk about. I just know for me, the terms aromantic and asexual are able to articulate things I was subconsciously feeling and thinking before I even realized I was feeling and thinking them. I don't plan on talking yeah, about this very to. much, if at all, ever again. I just want to play my <laughs> silly little video games, maybe tell a story here or there. Yes. But I wanted to bring the orientations to the surface and try to get more representation out there because I thought if I could help more people become more aware of this, then that would be awesome. I was confused as hell for a while and could have used something like this. It's a real thing. You don't have to feel any sort of romance or whatever <laughs> to be considered a real person. Personally, I think it's really cool and badass. And don't be afraid 100%. to look more into aromanticism or asexualism if any of what I said in this video resonated you with you alone. to any degree. Like I said, this is all very surface level stuff. They're both much larger spectrums than you'd think and maybe you fall under some umbrella category with them. I don't know, <laughs> or not. Either way, this has all been my personal experience with this stuff. Is there more for me to figure out within it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. It can yep. get pretty complicated and confusing. Haha, <laughs> awesome. Will I be sharing any of that with you? <laughs> nope, no way. This is all you get. Hope you can understand even just a little of what I talked about. And if not, that's totally fine. I just hope you can be nice. Ugh, I love that. That was so good. First of all, thank you so much for making this video. It's so important that someone like this comes out because like she said, a lot of people don't know about aromanticism or asexuality and because of the platform that she has and the amount of people that are going to see this and hopefully help people who do feel that way be like, huh, maybe I might be ace or I might be aromantic. And that's amazing and wonderful. And I love it. I love that more people are coming out as aro or ace and bringing more attention to it because definitely needs way more attention than it gets and welcome to the community you are welcomed with open arms i hope you all enjoyed this video i will be linking some videos about asexuality and aromanticism in the description so if you want to check those out please go ahead i do a lot of educational stuff about both if you want to learn more check them out thank you again and i will see you in the next video bye